first thing that's that you you capture more than anything yeah. is flow. Yeah. Now your flow, bro. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Right. I, I'm Without. Not sure, but yeah, yeah. Thanks. Flow. Flow's everything, right? It's like you know John Coltrane on the, on on the horn. You know, it's like I. I because I got a fix. Yeah. Yes, I got a philosophy class, and I, I'm explaining that there's a there's a um, there's like a there's two ways of information. There's like this um, content information that you understand and read, and then there's a emotional information, and the emotional information you can understand it without understanding the. The words you understand yeah. the emotion, you know, the intent behind it. Mm -hmm. and that's that's what it's happening when you see graffiti or you see uh, somebody dancing. Yeah. There's the inform. There's a emotional information that that you understand. Killer Keller Official dot com. Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. We're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. <laughs> and we're off to the races. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or as central as you need to be, choose to be, could be, you don't want to be anywhere else. Get yourselves ready for the upcoming Hoddle Wars. It's time to graph punks up and get up with some NFT gaming. Also, big shout out to Chief Rocker Gear from streets to stage. Chief Rocker is the streetwear of champions. Big shout out to the international crew right about now. Hold tight, everyone that's got the Kellervision app. Free download iPhone, Android for all your street culture sports. And then some big it up. Inside downs, we have an international traveler. Someone that's come all the way from Germany. Heidelberg? Yeah, that's yeah, Damn straight. It's the landmark uh, city, the capital of hip hop in Germany, I might add. Um, it's most definitely uh, old school hip hop time, bringing it right the way forward. Uh, the originator, one of the original dons of the German hip hop scene, I might add, Torch. Blau Samt was the original 2000 album release from this man. It's all gone on to a book uh, and then continued through his career, not just an MC, but a versatile uh, mixtape proprietor, uh, record releaser, all across the generations it is the mega fantastic my brother good friend torch inside the house yeah hi keller finally we did it <laughs> we did it we did we it did. how you been i'm good man what's happening we're talking for a long time about doing this my brother we've known each other for a long time Yeah. when when was it <laughs> easily like 2001 or something was it for the tour yeah oh. we went to we did the tour yeah we went my to, tour that's right in germany that's right that's right i mean listen you guys Germany as a hip hop scene, in my opinion, is the marketing prototype of what grime is is, is doing right now. Okay. Like when I when I see the organic, localized expose of artists from a country maximized in the way that you guys did with hip hop, grime's doing that now. Like you guys were arena tour artists. You know, it was it was no more less than nine hundred cap. Like you guys went clear, and the commercial audience were there. Well, it was a hard. It was a long way to get there. <laughs> you know, we didn't start with arenas. Hmm. Talk to all. me about that journey for you. Well, we started in the in the eighties, of course, with hmm. uh, you know White Style and Beat Street, hmm. and um, actually, you know that White Style was financed by. British and German TV, right? Oh, yeah, come on. <laughs> it's crazy. Huh? Yeah, exactly. The conglomerate together. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So we started with that in, uh, you know, 82, 83, 84. That's, that's when it really started for us. Mm. You had German people, like German uh, musicians or, or comedians that were rapping before us, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. And when I was a kid, I hated that stuff, you know, because it, Cheesy. Yeah, it felt like 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 making fun of hip hop or even black people or something. Just mocking. It, it, yeah, yeah it's, it felt like this. Now I think a little bit different. Now mm. I, I'm, I was wondering why was Helmut mm. and Jürgen mm. trying mm. to be funky? Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Some people just should not try and be yeah, funky. Yeah, but 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 why not? Like it, it's it's weird because it's funky and German at the same time. Now I can appreciate, but when I was a kid, I just it mm. felt awkward to me. Mm. And why would I listen to to the to the 
Yeah, to the wannabe version if I can listen to the the real to the real record. stuff. So, but then I I started to collect those records, and that's what my mixtapes is all Dude, about. Like he come with a whole plethora of different. Yeah, because uh, those yeah. those mixtapes is German eighties hip hop, and I I put all the crazy stuff, all the I don't know oh, everything man. that. I've gone back into these archives more often than not recently. I don't know whether it's a nostalgia thing or whether it's that 30-year cycle of relevance, mm -hmm. but when I hear some of this shit now, I'm like, yeah, that sounds fucking cool as fuck. That's what I mean. When I, when I, when I was a kid, I didn't like it, yeah. but now it's still awkward on, the, on one side, but it's, it's also interesting and funky. And it, I'm, I'm more like a... Uh, scientist now. I want to know what what was out there and why why did they do it? You know, I want to understand. Curiosity. It's curiosity, and that's the soundtrack of the curiosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I love it. I um, I was digging for mm -hmm. a long time. I started in '89 to to collect German '80s hip hop stuff, like people who breaks and uh, oh. breaks. Of course, there's a lot, and yeah. but but also like. Uh, Breakdance songs. Why? Why would a you know it was it was a trend? So a lot of comedians and actors did breakdance songs or songs about scratching in yeah. German and or rapping in general. So I collected all and I did two mixtapes out of it. Craft work. See, but that's even before hip hop. So it's yeah. it's it's it's. I mean, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Like you can really get in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Deep into it. Yeah. And now I, it started as a mixtape. But I did a, um, a whole, um, how you say this, um, an article, an article, uh -huh. yeah, a yeah, scientific yeah. article in, in, a, in a book that, that came out this year. So this is why you were going on the Wi-Fi. Okay, yeah, I yeah, get it's it. Called, Genius. It's called Global Hypography. Wow. And uh, it's done by uh, two guys, Quentin and Jaspal Singh. Uh -huh. they, they did this book. And uh, they helped me doing the article together with Brian Witt. They helped me do an article. Incredible. And it's, uh, it came out on Palgrave Macmillan in England. In wow. English. The article is in English. English version. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, see, we're dealing with this on the podcast, people. We're going, no pony shit. We're getting in the realists. Some of the dons, people are architects. Yeah, a lot of books, uh, a lot of good books coming out in, in, in England. Yeah, this big year. up Mr. Normski, which you did a, a forward through, right? You, you did a piece in that. Yeah, yeah, I wrote, he asked me to write um, something yeah. about the photo session that we did. Because yeah. we did a, a, a photo session with him. A long once. time ago. long right? time yeah. ago, I think. With Tony, right? Tony L. Not big up in, Tony L. Yes. Another German legend right there. Wow. In 96, I mm -hmm. think, because we were in Germany and uh, we didn't we didn't have a hip-hop photographer in Germany at this time, I would mm -hmm. say. And we were thinking of, like, who could, who could be our photographer because we wanted something new, we wanted something real. So we, I was looking through my records and I saw a lot of uh, American yeah. photographers, you know, George DuBose and uh, mm -hmm. Jenny Beckman and Glenny Friedman, yeah, all yeah, those yeah, names yeah. came up. Legendary. And then I was looking through my records and then on on the records of Hijack and Asha D, Daddy Freddy, Demon mm -hmm. Boys and all this, was all Norman Enders and Norman Enders and Norms. <laughs> <Norms. laughs> like, like, <laughs> so we're like, okay. So And then we we realized like there's, there is a hip hop yeah. Yeah. photographer in Europe. Like, yeah. I mean, there were more, but we did not yeah, yeah, know. Yeah. So, so we went to England to... to to nab him, to get him. Yeah, yeah to get him and to, to, to do the photo shoot with him. That takes a lot of... Um... Actually, let me think this through. At that stage mm. in hip-hop and its, its trajectory, trajectory, photos were everything. It, it, they, they, yeah. they, there wasn't any other a, a medium that allowed... A part, you know, we're talking early infancy MTV. The only other thing was the photo. Right, but see, we have to talk about the German perspective because yeah. at this time um, we didn't have really our own structures right. Mm -hmm. So MTV was in English coming from England. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah. know, and uh, to be on MTV in England with the German rap is, was not that easy. No, right? no. So, um, 
So that's why we, we did our own structures. We had yeah. to build our own labels and our own uh, festivals and jams. Mm -hmm. We had to build them our own because, you know... It wasn't going to translate any other no, way. No, no, it was not, was not easy. Plus, um, we didn't got... When we started, there was not a lot of love from other European countries, you know, just because of the world war mm -hmm. being like the label German was mm -hmm. not, you know, was not, mm -hmm. was not easy. Right. So especially England, um, Netherlands, France, when you came and said, Hey, we're Germans. They're like, Ugh, you know, and, mm. and to, to, to bring, uh, the Europeans to, to Germany, to, to celebrate hip hop with us was not that easy. So no, but it was it was a hip hop was a signal though. It was a it was a yeah. an okay sign of like yeah, come through and enjoy, have fun. Yeah, that that was our mission. Like yeah. we we wanted to have it European. We mm. wanted to have it universal and yeah. international. That was our goal. And yeah. if you see out the first flyers uh, that from our, of our jams, they're all international. They're mm. all. European hip hop jam, yeah. you know? second to none. Duh, 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 duh. Yeah, yeah. We, we we were not doing German hip hop jam. It's no. not even our idea, you know, because no. um, that was our plan. Yeah, but it was really hard to you know to yeah. convince yeah. other Europeans to. Did you really feel that you guys? Oh really yeah, felt? yeah, oh, yeah, hardcore. Oh, that's deep. When I was when I was a kid, it was like th that's what I wrote in the book with with Normski. When I when we were kids in the eighties, like it was mad man. <laughs> When we arrived in England, mm. the, the German school bus, forget about it. Really? Oh, yeah. You arrive somewhere and, and the English kids throwing stuff and, and like attacking us and what? the crowd's coming and it's, it's crazy. No of course. Way. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but that was the 80s and, and maybe the beginning of the 90s. Now it's over, but. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, it couldn't be f further away in history, although, you know, echoes of. Of repeated performances from yeah, and other it's, countries, it's, and and imagine I, I grew up with a German dad and a Haitian mom, mm -hmm. right? So in Germany, you you got the heat yeah. of the Germans, and then you come yeah. to other European countries, and then you're the Nazi. You're yeah, like, yeah, what yeah, the yeah, fuck? Yeah, yeah. You just, you, it's you, insane. You're stuck in the middle. Of so so hip hop was was the the way yeah. out. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, man. It's incredible when you think about how much the world has turned on to hip hop over 50 years or more. Yes. When we're talking about graffiti, I mean, you know, this goes way beyond the 50, but, you know, just peace, love, unity and having fun was the mantra. And I think that the other elements, not the rap, was more easy to connect through the... Instantaneously, yeah. Yeah, because if you rap in German, you know, you got the, the language barrier mm. straight. And... Um, with the graffiti, like if you see a dope graffiti, you don't, you know. Yeah, so. why regionalize yourself to that? That yeah, internationally, yeah. it speaks for. It was the same, same as beatbox, with, man. Same with beatbox yeah. or with with uh, breaking. Yeah. you know, DJs. Yeah. It, it's easier to. Isn't that funny how that works? That being said, though, and this is how my my genuine love for Germany lies in the fact that you guys are the first to embrace like reggae. Like for, for just for one example, and what you mentioned with Wild Style, it's it's embracing those future Ford ideas and um, opening up the market space. You guys have been you pioneered that, particularly in entertainment. I mean, yeah, there's there's some people who did it more, like uh, a guy that does not get mentioned that much. It's uh, Akim from MZ. Mm -hmm. like yeah, he, he was really pushing it like he was really pioneering a lot of stuff you know like the jams or the yeah big up mz man yeah that was that's a that was a pioneering yeah, was platform a, bro. yeah there was a pioneering platform and um because you you said it start like you got the arena things in mm. in mind but it started not with arenas it no. started with really small jams mm. um plus you have to understand germany is not organized like um england or or France. Mm -hmm. In France, like everything is uh, concentrated on Paris, and, and in England, everything is concentrated on London. Mm. In Germany, in my, yeah. that I grew up, it was not like no, that at all. There was so much spread. Yeah, it's totally spread out. So how do you do it? Yeah. You know, so you have to you have to go to Munich and and convince Munich people, mm. and then you have to go to Frankfurt, to convince them, and mm. then go to Hamburg and convince them. Then you go to Berlin, mm -hmm. and so it's it's a lot of work. You cannot yeah. just go. To one city right. and and you know and from there you you mm. it's it wasn't like that 
And uh, it's funny because you said the, this arena thing. Mm. For us, or for me personally, um, the arena thing was more, uh, was more England. Really? Yeah, because you had the yeah yeah you, you had the Fresh Fest in in America yeah. in '84. Yeah. And then you had the UK Fresh. Fresh, yes, right. And the UK Fresh was in the arena. '87. '86. '86. Yeah. Wimbledon. That's right. So we saw this and like wow, like it's a whole. We can do this too. Yeah, like we want to do this too, but. For us, it was not easy to because UK Fresh, you had German people coming mm. to 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 London to be part of it. But how can we bring English people to to our jams? That was not easy. Mm. So it started not with arenas, but with small jams. But then in Switzerland, you had the CH Fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the you know? bells. Yes. So UK Fresh, CH Fresh, and that's where we play with with the with my band back in the days, Advanced Chemistry. Mm. We played, yeah. yeah, hold tight, advanced chemistry, yeah. legendary. We played with London Parsi. Yeah. That was in 1990. We played with London Parsi, Stereo MCs, Rob. <laughs> Come up. on, Rob. And, um, yeah, and, and a lot of French groups, uh, Lionel Day, D Nasty, New Generation MCs, Salia, then from, from Switzerland, Luana, huh. EKR, a lot of people from all over. Wow. From, from East Germany, downtown lyrics, you know, that was that was the thing. So it was not an arena, but the idea was European, bringing it all together. Yeah, yeah, because 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 the UK fresh was more concentrated on the American acts. But London puts for, big up Rodney, um, Rodney Ironic, of course, you know, like L London Posse was seismic over here. Like you didn't just, you know, this, people. Don't, there's a respect element there. People want to come to Germany. It's, that's a big act to come over to your sides. Yeah, we had to build it up to yeah. to be uh, attractive and to have a nice scene, but it was yeah. so much work. Yeah, because even to to rap in German was a lot of work. Like all this stuff here was was a lot, a lot of stuff in German was corny, so we had to build up the the new dialogue. Yeah, like like how 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 do you rap in Germany? How how do you rap in German not being corny? Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. yeah. What what language do you use? What 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 or themes? Slang. Yeah, what slang? What 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 themes do you use? You know, and mm. that was a lot of work yeah, yeah, to yeah, convince your own people and the people outside of your country. Because you Germany is a very traditional country in its rural areas. It's, it's very, you know. I mean, I love it. Give me a Bavarian beer any day. <laughs> but also incredibly intelligent. Now, I What happened to Lager? Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> straight to the beers. I, there is no other better place to have a beer, I swear to God, than Germany. I don't, don't from the bottom of my heart. I, I, I get drunk and I feel totally fine the next morning. None of this chemical shit that goes on around here. Um, I am reciting in my head times, Torch, when... So beer is the solution, basically. Beer is the solution. <laughs> I don't even drink. Yeah, no, no, I know, no. I've kind of calmed down. But... um. I, I'm remembering many conversations I've had with you, Torch. I mean, you were one of the first people that taught me the male and female uh, langu language within German um, phrasing and, and words. Ah, oh, because of the articles? Yeah, do you uh, remember yeah, yeah. you had that conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the different... Yeah, this um, was back in 2000. Historical... Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. You taught me that. You, influences you, that yeah. English has, yeah. yeah. And then, you, then, you, then we had this massive conversation yeah, about talking about um, the world wars. I remember having that very, very... Uh, you know, upfront conversation. Yeah, you guys are obsessed with that too. Like the, the German. I mean, yeah, but there's no. also there's also an. Um, we also had a conversation about German efficiency, uh, which to 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 my point, we're here on time. You are an extremely articulated, well delivered person. Only natural that you're a great MC, and thanks. 2001's album, you know, early noughties, depicted that and has been now written in a book because that's what MCs do. It's incredible, your time span and, and your versatility as an MC. You know that we, we talked about the book, right? Yeah. This book is not the book, in a way it is, but it's not. it was not meant to be a book for the album. This This book was meant to be a part of the creative idea to release something that comes out as an album and a book. You know what I mean? Mm. It's not that I was wanted to do an album and then do a book to No, no, you wanted it at the same time. Yeah, bang, yeah. bang. The idea was, hey, how about I I do something that is an album and a book at the same time? Mm -hmm. 
That was 20 years ago. I never, I never, I never, mm. I, I failed. I could not do it, you know, because I was young. Mm-hmm. I was not even 30 years old. So mm. I just managed to do the album. Mm. Which is a test, you know, a test of character in itself. Thanks, man. Fucking great. So, this, was book, amped, yes. so this book is it. Well, Samt. And, uh, oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's talk, it talks it's, about the philosophy. But I'm selling a lot of those books, man. It's, I'm doing it, I did it on my own. I did yeah. it on my own. The, what's important, what's the, what the value in this, though, is, is the idea yeah. of bringing two, um, uh, two mediums together, isn't it? See, to me, hip hop was never um, just being a rapper or something. To me, hip hop was like not to limit yourself. Yeah. So, um, like the world I grew up in Germany was always tried to push me in one way. Like, okay, you have to, you know, this mm. take, take take this route or this road. And um, hip hop allowed me to 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 be everything uh, at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, I can I can be a, an author and a, a DJ and a collector and a scientist and a and a lawyer and whatever mm-hmm. I want to be. Mm-hmm. Hip hop allowed me that easily. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, e- even an, as an entrepreneur, like you know, I do all the stuff my own, right? Mm-hmm. Of course, I work with labels and stuff, but at the end, you go back to yourself and yeah. you just. You do your podcast, you do it on your yeah, own, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You paint your train, you do it on your own. Yeah, yeah. You write your book, you do it on your own. The study of it. It's only two people who helped me doing the book. It's uh, one guy who helped me to, to to finish it, like really to finish it. That's yeah. Brian Witt. That's almost like a proofreader. Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He yeah. helped me to really... Pick up the wall of proofreaders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he did more than proofreading. It was really like we sat together and talked about it and finished the book. Wow. And then was Rob Hack. Rob Hack is another guy who did all the covers of Sick. stuff. He did the, the it's graphics. It's a beautifully stuff. presented book, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's... It's like a journal. It, it meant to be really deep, so that's why it's just blue. Yeah. Yeah, it's, like, it's like an ocean, you fall into it. It has, nice. you know, it's like... I don't want it to be flashy or like, yeah. hey, read me. It was yeah, it's more embossed like, as well. You've got the, you've got the, the title yeah, embossed. You have there. to touch it, you know. Yeah, in fact, let me dial that in closer. There you go. You get what I'm saying? It's all right. All right, yeah. Yeah, and then I didn't want it to be um, flashy in the inside either, like not too much um, pictures. Mm. I, I really wanted people to read it. Mm-hmm. It was like the books that I read when I was a kid growing mm. up. It was like work. You know, I, I hated to read it, but it was mm. so important to me to read it. So mm-hmm. I went through it. I did it. You mm-hmm. know, it's like painting a whole car. You know, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, oh, yeah. I hate it. It's work. Cry, you know, but cry, cry. Oh, do it, do yeah, it. Yeah, but yeah. then you're like, ah, I did it, and that's real discipline. Yeah, yeah. And mm. I want people to to suffer the same way that I <laughs> suffer when I. You like me? You won't by the end of this. <laughs> fucking read this shit. Yeah. Then yeah. There's this mathematical um, equations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of crazy there's shit. No messing around. That is a it's a nerd yeah. book, man. It's, it's a nerd book, man. And uh, and and anyone is. And it's a... your chance to learn German. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, big up Mark Hype because Hype said to me one time. He goes, "You know how I learned?" I think, listen, I'm paraphrasing here, so it's not exactly how he said it, but basically he learned. Um, English through oh, yeah. the English versions of Star Wars. Yeah. I learned English, of course, in school, yeah. school English, but then with with, with rap yeah. records or, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, stuff like this and uh, and Star Wars in English because I knew, st- like, there was several movies that mm-hmm. I knew from A to Z, like... In uh, German. So in German, English, right, yeah. right, like Scarface yeah, yeah, or yeah. like um, Damn, Star Wars. Yeah. So then you see it in it English, and then you understand everything. Yeah, isn't that crazy, man? It's it's the things you, that we take for granted. Do you think there? Do you think there's enough opportunity for um, the new generation in Germany to embrace such future? For, you know, just in, in, interest in learning something. So well, it's another it's another world now. Yeah. You know, back in the days, you information was really sparse. Yeah, you had to dig for it. You had to yeah. look for it. Yeah. I went. I I I spent days in in bookstores just to find the the right mm-hmm. content, or spent days in in record shop listening to to the records to mm-hmm. dig and to find stuff. Nowadays, it's all out there. You still have to dig and stuff, mm-hmm. but it's more like you have to filter out the information mm-hmm. that's coming. You now, mm-hmm. back in the days, you had to. 
you were looking for input. Now you're looking for a piece. <laughs> it's too much. Yeah, input. yeah, yeah. Too much. Calm down. Do do you um because as a as a as an English person speaking person, um, listening to German rap, and I'm sure you did the equivocal from a German's point of view. The first thing that's that you you capture more than anything, yeah, is flow. Yeah. Now your flow, bro. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Right. I, I'm Without, not sure, but yeah, yeah. Thanks. Flow. Flow's everything, right? It's like you know John Coltrane on 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 the horn. You know, it's like I. I because I got a I mean, yeah. yes I got a philosophy class and I, I'm explaining that there's a there's a um, there's like a there's two ways of information there's like this um, content information that you understand and read and then there's a emotional information and the emotional information you can understand it without understanding the the, mm. the words you understand yeah. the emotion you know the intent behind it mm -hmm. that's yeah. that's what it's happening when you see graffiti or you see uh, somebody dancing yeah. there's the info there's a uh, emotional information that that you understand you know? and nothing there's two, i'm going to say two names in german rap which i feel epitomize that firstly sammy deluxe the emotive in some of the, the emotion in some yeah. of the peace to sammy big up sammy and in a complete and utter I don't think there's anybody out there like it in the world. Stieber twins. Oh, Stieber twins. Yeah. My God, two twins that just mirror each other in <laughs> style and skill. Yeah, yeah, they're, it's they're, incredible. They're from my city. Yeah, like we grew up together. Yeah. And uh, there's another guy. Um, we we talked about Stieber twins. We yeah. talked about Tony L. Tony L. We talked about advanced chemistry. Advanced there's chemistry, a lot of people yeah. more, but there's another guy I started with too. When you know, in '82, '83, that's G One. G One. Yeah, yeah. He's he's uh, he's a graffiti writer, <gasps> and uh, we started together also um, back in the days. And he is originally from England. Really? Yeah, yeah. He's, G One. He's his parents are from Chile, but he is born and grown up in in not grown up, but he's born in spent his first years in Nottingham, in Notts. Stop it off. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he came to to the Heidelberg area. We grew up together, all together, and we painted the first train also in Heidelberg together, and then from there, you know, we Get out of there. evolved. Evolved. A uh, curse. Curse, yeah. And, and he, the, you two, Torch and Curse, were the names that were the talk and yeah, that's, that's well, more the deeper rap, like yeah. more the, the conscious, conscious like, yeah. more the poet, you know. Like you guys philosophy. were the talk of the tour. When me when we went on tour, yeah. you guys were definitely doing the rounds at that point. Yeah. Stieber you know? Twins brought curse in the in the game. Yeah. And the first um the I think the first uh feature that yeah. Curse did was on the album of Tony L that I put out. Mad. I I'm, don't want to lie, but I'm pretty sure. And this is why Heidelberg has been crowned the, the hip-hop capital of Germany, right? Well, there's there's a lot of capitals, but uh, Heidelberg got a special place, yeah. like like a special place in... A badge of yeah, yeah. honour. Yeah, yeah. And uh, even the UNESCO mm. gave the... the this, how you call it? This intangible heritage. I don't know the names in English. I don't know. It sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah. Google it. Yeah, you Google yeah. that shit. <laughs> yeah. But of course, it's not only Heidelberg. There's a lot of yeah. different places, especially in Germany, where it's spread out. Yeah, you crazy. cannot just say it's one city. It's, no. It's totally spread out. But yeah, we, we did our part. Mm -hmm. um, big up Karen. Sabotage, yeah. of course. Um, that's that's how we met, right? That's right. That's how we Karen, met. Karen does the... Uh, this booking agency. That's right, sabotage. Yeah, big dad up. Um, she was in Heidelberg too. Yeah, she was a Heidelberg resident, and uh, that's that's how I got to spend so much time in Heidelberg. A lovely place. I love Heidelberg. And big up Atom, amazing graffiti writer as well. I know that's uh, Sammy Deluxe's boy. That's Heidelberg. That's uh, a picture I took. Well. There you go. Heidelberg. When I was fifteen, man. Yeah, looks amazing. See, that's my mixtapes. You know. Does it ever get too much? You do a lot of work. At the same time, I'm not really active. You know, I'm I'm doing a lot, but I'm I re I'm, I'm just a father. You know, I'm just chilling with my kids basically, and then I got some days off, and mm. then I do some lectures or sp spin in a bar or 
do a show or I come to yeah. London to, to do a, <laughs> a podcast okay, with you. Come on. Um, um, but I'm not, I'm not really the, the active part of the scene, you know, because I did everything. I was a B-boy. Mm. I was gr doing graffiti, you know. Back in the days I came mm. with, with Kane, with G1. I came to, to England to, to, to bomb trains and stuff. Mm. So I did everything, but I'm not like the, the, the active scene right now. But that's know? what I kind of mean. It's not, it, it's not work rate is in, is in speed and, and, you know, craziness. What I mean is, like, to have a head for all of the different disciplines... Like you said, in the same day, you could be in a studio vocaling something, then doing the marketing on a mixtape, then you're, you know, you're doing some business lunch and then you've got to go and DJ in the evening. That's a, there's a lot of heads. Do you know what I mean? How do you, how do you compartmentalise that? I don't know, man. I'm, I'm doing everything on, at the same time. Yeah. It's... Spinning plates. It's, it's been... I don't know it uh, different, you mm. know. Do you think that's... Do you think that's a blessing or a curse of the in independent artist? It's both. Um, I think not everybody can do it. Yeah. But I learned it that way. Mm. You know, I never just wanted to be a rapper. Mm. I never just wanted to be a graffiti writer. So mm. I like being, um, when, when I get bored in, in one thing, mm. I jump to the other. Mm. For me, mm. it's a blessing. For other people, it's a distraction. For me, it's a blessing. Yeah, because you're constantly relying on the creative outlets that hip hop has provided. Get, yeah, right. For me, it's this hip hop culture thing that I learned. Yeah, yeah. and it's 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 good because when when uh, a lot of people these days when when they 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 become stars and then when the music business is not working anymore, where do, what do they do? You know, yeah. where, where do they go? And for me, it's easy. I go back to to the culture. You know, I go yeah. back to to roots. sketching to roots, and 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 I'm good there. Yeah, I, I don't feel like a failed artist because I don't see myself like this. You know, I'm I'm based in the culture. Far from it. Yeah. And from there, I can I can you know evolve or go back. It's both okay. Oh, you God. know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. Like to me, it's it's it, I'm all right if I'm at home sketching with my kids. Yeah, it it doesn't feel like. I'm doing nothing because no. that's how I started. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. And then I can do a stadium and then come back yeah. to sketching with my kids. It's yeah. totally fine. Yeah. You know? Because it's as important as that. It's even more important to me because yeah. the stadium, to rock a stadium is, is, a, is an experience, but it's not really my life. No. You know? I'm not a pop artist rocking stadiums. No. You know? Other people are. But mm. I mean, we started at the same time with Advanced Chemistry back in the, in the days like like in France, um, Assassin or NTM. NTM, yeah. We, or I am. We, yeah. we started all together, you know, and we grew up together. We, we met each other and we worked together. Yeah. And um, Cut Killer and all that. that yeah, yeah Cut Killer. Era. Yeah. And uh, I, I, because uh, there was a, there was not much contact between like France and, and, and Germany. There mm. were people like Gorky or, or Dark or Gore. Mm -hmm. That were that were in both um, scenes and mm -hmm. both cultures, but there was not a lot of exchange. And uh, I brought Mo two to Germany, mm -hmm. you know, because because I'm I grew up with French and German, so I'm both, you know. Yeah, yeah, and I dope. was yeah, yeah. So, and and it was funny to see because uh, in '91 we we painted a piece together, Zepsta, Mo two, and me, in in Basel, in in, in Switzerland, and it's funny because Zepsta painted an AC for Advanced Chemistry and Mo two painted an NTM, back in the days it was NTM. And so it was a, a piece of advanced chemistry and NTM together, you know, in 91. Wow. So, Did you photo that? So the, the thing is that <gasps> for us, um, it started as a, as a global or European movement and there was no borders and then it separated, you know. Then mm. everybody did his career, if mm, you want, mm. but we never thought about a career. No. So I had a career, but it's not the most important thing to me. So I go back and uh, chill with Mo2 or uh, with, yeah. with G1 and... and, and just, come around here and... Yeah, or with Killer Keller. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's the most important thing, isn't it? The, the experience, it's the journey, isn't it? Yeah, and, the, and the, the, the substance is like to go back to the essence and, and figure out what you want to do next. And not, oh, I did, I did tours, I have to do bigger tours yeah. and more tours, but you go back and then you say, okay, maybe I'll write a book or maybe I'll do a mixtape and it's all good. Religiously... It's like, I don't know how you feel, but when I do something, like you say, even if it's a sketch or a beatbox, something in your own room, the, 
the feeling is you're giving to the cultural gods. It's contributive, even though if it's just between you and the page. Yeah, you have to come back to you, yeah. to yourself, before you, you give something to yeah. other people. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's hip-hop, isn't it? I'm, I'm, I mean, we're still, we're still trying to understand so what hip-hop is. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. funny, because I started as a kid. I started with yeah. 11 years old, like, breaking yeah. and stuff. And I know it's a big part of my life. It's really important. I never had an, a regular job. I never had a, you know, <laughs> I that's always was in the, so the hip-hop. And still trying to figure out what it really is and what it, you know, it's yeah. incredible. It's the best. And, and other people are, are, are totally uh, on the same mission because uh, it's worldwide. Yeah. Uh, it's not a fad. People, people are studying it. People yeah. are loving it. That's why they're looking at yeah. the show. Yeah. They love it. Yeah, they love it. <laughs> and um, I mean, for me, it's a little bit um, different speaking English because mm. usually I'm more German or French. Mm. But uh, it's... It, because you're my friend, it's, it's going good. <laughs> yeah, it's going, it's working. <laughs> it's working. I didn't teach a single thing you needed to know. Yeah, because yeah, usually I don't even do interviews that much. No. I don't, I this don't. is rare. Like, I, I'm, yeah. I'm fully appreciative of the fact that you don't do a lot of... I love speaking with people, yeah. but, but not doing interviews, yeah. you know? Why is that? I don't believe in interviews, because interviews is, 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 is... It's like you speak with like 100 people a day, and mm. then this one conversation is recorded and like, oh, this is the real conversation. Th yeah, this is for the, you know, for the infinity. Mm -hmm. This is really what he really has to say. Mm. Maybe it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's the, it's okay conversation and the, the best conversation we're going to have yeah. in two minutes with a bus driver. Yeah, I don't know, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. so, I, I don't know. Do you live in the moment? I, you know, to torch, like, when, when we get in conversations, we get in conversations and <laughs> the, the amount of times... Yeah, but, but you, you remember we had so many conversations. Yeah, time flies, man. Yeah, but then when somebody is gonna film it, it yeah. it's not it's it's not the real conversation anymore. So why is when it's filmed the real con? It's not. It's yeah. the opposite. So why would I like interviews? You know? But do you think that's 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 that kind of epitomizes our world now? I'll give you an example. Um, Claw Money, big up Claw Money. She uh, she told this story of like how back in New York, uh, back in the day. They'd be partying in clubs, partying hard. As soon as someone brought up a camera, everyone yeah. just hit. But now it's the complete opposite. Everyone's bored as fuck in the club. Well, not entirely. But, you know, they're, they're, they're just kind of getting along in clubs. And then as soon as the camera comes out, that's where they perform. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. a whole different mindset now. And, um, yeah, I just feel like some things, are, some things are best not recorded. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I said. I, yeah. Uh, I... I do interviews, especially with you, because we're friends, yeah. I know you, and we have a... Good conversation. Good conversation, yeah. so it's, it's all right, we can do it. Yeah. But if you don't know the guy, then maybe I'm just trying to sell something. Yeah. And, that, and it's rigid. It's, I don't know. Yeah, you know? it is tight. I, I've been there I don't many love times. it, you know, that's no. it. No, it's, and, and it's a funny one, isn't it? Again, just going back to how it's perceived nowadays, it's very easily to, there's the definitive conversation, that's all you're gonna, ever going to get, and it doesn't work like that. The world doesn't work like that. It's but, like doing one album. But speaking of sense. conversation, another thing that I did not mention, back in the days, um, we had uh, pen pals. Oh, my God, yeah. We, we were did. writing letters, Yeah. right? And um, I was writing <laughs> letters with Styrium C's, yeah. you know, and... Uh, it's so key to the culture at that time. Yeah. Me too. I used to, that's how I got... Big up Victor Stanku. Um, you know, that's how I met Victor. That's how I met Karen. It was through paper pen pals. It's yeah. so fucking true. And, and if, you, if you write a letter, you had to decide what you write. It's yeah. not something you really, you know, it's not yeah. quick chat. You know, it's like, okay, I'm going to write a letter. You yeah. know, and then, so we wrote letters to each other. And uh, especially to England was, I had a lot of pen pals in England, and one of the my pen pals was Inky from from Bristol. Big up Inky, yeah. Yo. <laughs> yeah, that's one hell of a pen pal. You must have got some flicks and some pics. Yeah, yeah, mag sketches. Yeah, yeah, and he like I sent him my stuff, and then he sent stuff back, and I was burned. I was like, oh. <laughs> you know, like he killed me. <laughs> and he always was really good. Oh, he's always and he talked lovely guy. Yeah, yeah, and good and man. he, but it's funny. I think even he wrote me because I think he. 
you got my address from Smith and Mighty or something. Because wow, back in the day, yeah, yeah. I haven't heard for a while. Smith and Mighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But back in the days, like there was not that. Mm-mm. You know, the scene was not yeah. huge, so so we all were connected in a way. Yeah. And it was good times. And, yeah. And uh, with uh, 3D. 3D massive yeah. attack. Yeah. Does that, does that does that does that yeah does that surprise some you? Other people, yeah. How how far the, the scenes come, you know, how far because we you know just going back to the arena they've got a full circle here, <laughs> they, you know, Stereo MCs were a huge arena act, Inky, 3D, Tricky, Portishead, Bristol in large at large yeah, but, blew up. But they didn't start as arena. No. They, exactly they started as real cats doing mm. what they love, and then they blew up. Mm. So mm. that you know, when we connected, it was before everybody blew up. You know. Yeah. The pre- Do you think there's a sweet spot for that in the in the world of um, media and entertainment, where you suddenly see the the light in the in the in the in the dust, and you're like, "Yo, it's our time. Do it." It's it's the time to tell those stories now. Yeah. The interview we're doing now, maybe we could not have done it 30 years ago, no. you know. So we're doing it now. Mm. And in the book of Normsky, you know, mm. um, 30 years ago, I don't know if, if they would have put German rappers in a book. No. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, Yeah, I get you. Maybe. From what you've I said. I mean, Normsky then. not, but, yeah. but... Oh, Normsky's a... He don't yeah, care. Yeah, he like, don't care. <laughs> right, right. But, but you know what I mean? It, yeah. it was like... I don't know. Was be- frowned? Yeah, yeah. And F- only from what you've said, because I, I I wouldn't have felt that. But but I was new school hip hop for that time. Yeah, so. and now now we we all, all evolved our history. Everybody has a history. Yeah, and uh, we respect each other's history also, and we want to learn. That's, yeah, it's a good it's a good place to be in. Yeah, to do those podcasts or books. Yeah, hundred percent. To 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 ex- exchange our experiences. But. In a, from a golden age, in my opinion, you know, mm-hmm. of, of German hip hop, um, there were some real characters in the scene, the real, real characters. Like I, I look back now and I'm like, man, like you didn't even get them in UK hip hop for his time. Like, you know, some know. people like characters, you know, Afro and um, who else? Uh, uh, well, Dynamite Deluxe as a whole, you know, there was just so many identifiable personalities. There was just, you know, you just, you know. It really, you don't have in one singular poof, moment of yeah, yeah. time. Maybe it's because of those different cities. You know, that's not yeah. one city that yeah. is dominating yeah. everything yeah. in a way. Where's Afro from? Where, where's he from? Who? Afro. Uh, Stuttgart. Stuttgart. Yeah. And uh, so maybe, you know, you have different places that's evolving differently. And, yeah. and you yeah. know, I don't know, maybe. But like you say, I mean, you know, there's there's Stuttgart, there's, um, there's so many cities. Cologne. It's incredible. Who's um and, and, and at the beginning it was even not only the big cities like D Flames from Frankfurt. Frankfurt. Okay. Yeah, but that's 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 DJ Star Wars is from Bremerhaven. Yeah, big up big yeah, up. Yeah, but there's big there's, there's small Wars. cities also, like yeah. Aschaffenburg, yeah. you know, or Mainz or yeah. not Mainz is not small, but there's a lot of cities that are not what, that known or that big, mm-hmm. but they used to play a big role in the beginning of hip hop too. That's mm-hmm. important too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, man, great, long, man, long way. Long, come a long way. So, uh, what's the future, my brother? So, we've got these mixtapes around uh, v- version one and version two. We, we've got another one here. This is, this, let me just throw these things up, play them up. Bing, bing. Yeah, those, those mixtapes, you don't find them online. No. Because they're really on, on CDs and tapes. You really yeah, yeah. have to get them. That's. I just like it like that. Yeah, we love it like the that. The stuff that you have online is, of course, the Instagram, the YouTubes, yeah. the, the Spotify's, the titles and stuff. There you get my official songs. You yeah, know, yeah, there yeah, you yeah. can can stream the songs, but the, the mixtapes or the books, man, you got to dig Beautiful. for it. <laughs> so what's the future? What else, what else got going on? I don't know. I've, I mean, we just started, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're young in the game. Yeah. Young in the game. We're the young cats. But with all the books, all the releases online, offline. I love, man. I love the 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 connection between the the, the connection is, is so easy these days with the internet. Mm. So I think this is the good part of the internet. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good part of the internet. And we don't want to get um, bogged down with the negative stuff because what we actually have compared to our you know pen pal writings back in the day or opportunity maybe we do a gig and we might see each other 
it's, it's there. We've got all the communication we want to really build whatever music scene we're doing. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Torch in the House. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me, my brother. Still in business. Come on, UK German Connect. Um, yo, I like anyone out of fashion. You stay lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't remember. Crime don't pay, but neither did they. All right? You stay lucky. Easy. Yeah. Did that record? Ha <laughs> ha